We're in a series studying the Apostle Paul, and we're studying the, the, the similitudes, the likeliness of the All Nations Worship Assembly story and the church at Corinth. A very complicated story. It's just complicated. Gifted and crazy. <laughs> Anointed and dysfunctional. <laughs> Y'all won't laugh and I don't care. <laughs> Abilities and mental issues. Um, it, is, it is my plight, Pat, uh, Pat uh, Rob. It is my, it is my plight. Uh, it is my anointing. It is what I've been called to do. I've been called to the crazy gifted ones. Everybody can't handle Michael Jackson. And everybody can't handle Whitney Houston. And everybody can't pastor Prince. I was selected to manage men and women who are heavily endowed in the spirit and don't know how to live. Who can interpret dreams and can't manage budgets. <laughs> Let's go. Who, 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 who can discern demons and choose bad boyfriends. They... They squint, and they peer, and they want people that are, uh, they love, but y'all, Corinth, love being unequally yoked. There is some, chill already. There's something in y'all that just loves to have sex with the unbeliever. I know. It's attractive. It's, it, it's appealing. So hopefully you've been digging into this book because it is a very, 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 very important book to understand what I'm about to teach you right now, which is life. I wish that Sunday school were better, Latia, and I wish that somebody would have gave me a class on life. Because before I give you my text, which is going to be a classic text, I'm actually excited about it, I want you to know life lives. Life be life and bruh. And, 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 and it's, um, it's unpredictable, it's unmanageable. Life, it, come on, open your heart. Life, life, life is, there's no road map for it. And, and there's no, and, and, when, you, and you, when you look for an example on how to live life and you don't find one and you get frustrated and you fall and you do stupid stuff and you say stupid stuff because life be lifing. And at the end of the day, we got to know how to handle, lift your hands and scream the word life. life. Discipleship is about life. Christianity is about life. Relationship is about life, whether you know it or not. Friendship is about life. And uh, my assignment this morning prophetically is to help you handle what the heck is going on in your life. Now, it might not be all bad. Some of it might be good, but you need to measure, lift your hands and say life. Because something's going to happen. You're going to have a disappointment. Somebody's going to die. You're going to be depressed one day and sad another. But what I've learned, and I'm willing to be wrong, is that life is a science. And a part of life is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. you got to win Monday. If you lose Tuesday, get up again Wednesday. But whatever you do, don't stay down. Lift your hands and say life. And there's a lot of people going to church that don't know how to live. And, 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 and I'm concerned about why we, why we won't approach it. You're going to have a bad breakup. You're going to have a bad conversation. Something's going to happen in life. All right? Galatians, the fifth chapter. We are, in fact, studying Corinthians, but we can't understand Corinthians until we get to this point. Galatians, chapter 5. Verse 13 in the Living Bible. Y'all ready? 
get louder and I'll let you go sooner. Verse, oh, y'all don't want to go, okay. <laughs> Verse 13, for dear brothers, you have been given freedom, but not freedom to do wrong. Will you just look at your neighbor and say, your deliverance is for your destiny, not your destruction. Not freedom to do wrong, but freedom to love and serve each other. For the whole of the law, this messes me up, can be summed up in this one command, love others as you love yourself. What that tells me is I can't love nobody. I wish you would say, I, it's impossible for me to love you right until I learn how to love myself. I can't love you in that way. Anyway, but if instead of showing love among yourselves, you are always critical and catty, watch out. Beware of ruining each other. I advise you, here is a, a thing. We're going to just make this real simple this morning. Paul said, I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. Because <laughs> one thing the Holy Ghost will do is instruct. It's not just mediator and investigator. It's teacher. It's tutor. It's guide. It's mentor. The Holy Ghost. He says, I advise you to obey the Holy Spirit's instructions. He will tell you where to go and what to do. And then you won't always be doing the wrong things in your evil nature that wants you to. For we naturally love to do evil. Look, will you just look at your name and say, just because it feels good, don't make it good. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all going to make me work hard. To do the evil things just as opposite from the things that the Holy Spirit tells us to do and good things we want to do when the Spirit has his way with us are just the opposite of our natural desires. Look at me real quick. If you're going to fulfill your destiny, you're going to have to manage your desires. There are things that you desire, and they may come from different places, but the issue is you've got an assignment that may not be opposition or may be opposing your actual desires. You've got real desires, and them desires have to be disciplined. Lift your hands and scream yes. yes. You need to know what to do with what you want to do. Careers, spouses, money, Lord have mercy, moves, brands, images, changes. You got to know how to man manage that. All right, I understand. You don't want to hear that. These two forces within us are constantly fighting each other to con win control over us, and our wishes are never free from their precious. Verse 18 says, when you are guided by the Holy Spirit, you no longer force yourself to obey the Jewish law. Let's go to the meat right now. Verse 19. But when you follow your own inclinations, your lives will produce these evil re results. Number one, impure thoughts. I'm going to preach. Eagerness, lustful pleasure, idolatry, Spiritism. KJV said witchcraft. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is encouraging the activity of demons. Hatred, fighting, jealousy, and anger. Constant effort to get the best of yourself. Complaints and criticisms. The feeling that everyone else is wrong except those in your own little group. I didn't write this. And there will be wrong doctrine. Because when you have a wrong emotion, you will find a scripture to support. Verse 21, envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties. The KJV says, orgies. I'm going to go viral for that one too. And all that sort of thing. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Say read. Say read. read. But when the Holy Ghost controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit. 
The name of this message is I need some fruit. He will produce love. He will produce joy. He will, ain't said nothing about tongues. He will produce love, I, I'm coming, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And here there is no conflict with Jewish laws. Those who belong to Christ have narrow, nailed their natural desires to his cross, and they crucified them there. I need some fruit. You know, um, I want to start this in a very unique way, and it's going to be, Prophet Justin, an unconventional way to start it. Um, the movie Baby Boy. Elder Stephen, you know I like imagery. Um, I'm going right past all of everything y'all just thought about <laughs> to a scene that's very familiar to me, my family, gardening, where she's sitting by her plants, got a little wine, and, and she's enjoying herself. And it made me think when I studied this yesterday about growing. And how the Apostle Paul in both the Corinthian church and in both the church at Galatia was concerned about their lack of growth. And I had to think and meditate about how many people just don't grow. They get older. They have birthdays. They shout, uh, 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 I, I got to praise, I got to praise, and I got to get it out. But, 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 but your maturity level has not changed. I need some fruit. Now, the issue with fruit is that you can't fake it. F fruit has to be number one planted. Fruit has to be watered. Fruit has to be cultivated, and fruit has to be ripened. But Christian life, according to Galatians 5, is about fruit. And there are a lot of people that put in opposition the gifts of the Spirit, Gertie, versus the fruit of the Spirit, but I think it's both and. The fruit is actually what sustains the gifts. There are people who are whacking the gifts because they're weak in the fruit. And the issue is, is when you don't manage both and you don't operate in both and you don't want to reach both, you end up in Delulu land, delusional. Lift your hands and say, I need some fruit. And you know, mommy, the older I get, I'm looking at Galatians 5 and Paul is teaching us how to live. He, he, he's talking to us about what transformed life looks like, and then he gives us some features of what a restored person does, what a redeemed person values, what a saved person lives for. And I'm measuring myself, and I'm like, I, where am I in the realm of the fruit? <laughs> I ain't talking about y'all, because here's what we do on Facebook. We project, I understand, we, we villainize, we mock, we mean, but nobody has a darn mirror. Nobody looks and says, I wonder if I don't have the fruit. I, 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 I can make money off the gift, but you can't make money off the fruit. And so because I want money, y'all don't want to say nothing, and I worship mammon, I'm going to project the gift and I'm going to hide the fact that I'm not developed and lift your hands and say the fruit, the fruit, the fruit. Verse 22 troubles me so bad. May Dupree, it messes with me so bad. Because I look at this and I find what God does in Corinthians and Galatians, which is gives us mirrors. And mirrors are different. Let me give you, an, uh, you know, certain hotels and certain lighting, that's why y'all love filters. You, when you look at mirrors, um, praise the Lord, when you look at mirrors, 
it depends on the type of, of, of mirror you have that shows you what's going on before you. And Paul says something in 1 Corinthians that we see through a glass. The word of God, the, the Bible, is a mirror. And the problem is, is if you go to the Bible and don't see yourself, you didn't really go to the Bible. I'm working in here. I said if you go to the Bible and see them. And, and you were vindictive and mad and angry and wanted revenge and wanted to get even and wanted to retaliate. If it did not change you, you did not study it. If it did not change you, you did not meditate on it. Lift your hands and say, I need some fruit. Now listen to me. Got to go home. Nobody in America, I'm going down in history saying this, loves the Holy Ghost like me. When I tell you I be so full, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I do boast like Paul. I speak with tongues most in all. I, I love the Holy. When I tell you I, lo I love saying I'm filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I think a part of my assignment, Elder Wingard, is to make sure that there's a generation that keeps saying that. B b because there are people right now that want hope and they want encouragement and they want peace and they want to protect their peace but don't nobody want to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost because the real truth is the Holy Ghost is the peace Ooh! the Holy Ghost is the help the Holy Ghost is the sanity the Holy Ghost is the monitor yeah! the Holy Ghost is the protector the Holy Ghost is the reminder lift your hands and say thank God for the Holy Ghost. Forgive me, I got caught up. But proof of the Holy Ghost presence or control or leadership in your life is not another language. That's where we went wrong. We taught people how to speak Spanish. And didn't tell them how to live in the spirit. And didn't tell them like Paul said, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I have a problem with tongue-talking carnal people. I have a problem with people that know another language but can't get a hold of their head. There is something wrong. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, something happens in your soul. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, something happens in your character. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, something changes in your personality. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, the way you walk changes. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, the way you talk changes. Your conversations are not the same. When you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you choose differently. You think differently. You decide differently. You manage differently. Lift your hands and say I got the Holy Ghost oh I said again I got the Holy Ghost said one more time I've got the Holy Ghost said again say I got the Holy Ghost tell the devil I've got the Woo! tell the devil I've got the Holy Ghost that is my superpower it ain't no darn Enneagram it ain't no zodiac sign. My difference from you is I've got the Holy Ghost. We don't hear enough about it. We got tea and cookies in church and nobody wants to teach pneumatology. The doctrine, the doctrine of the Holy Ghost how he's the reason and the anchor and the support of life. You would learn how to live better if you would rely on the Holy Ghost. Jesus said he will lead you. He will guide you. He will show you what is to come. I just want to know if there's about 10 people that's grateful for the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm. Hey, the Holy Ghost. 
the one they try to keep in the closet, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, manifest in spirit that teaches you how to be a man and how to be a woman and how to be a father and how to be a son and how to be a mother and how to be a daughter. It's not a self-help book. It's the Holy Ghost. I'm concerned about, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm getting a little off. I'm concerned about how many Christians have made a profession of faith, but they ain't full of the Holy Ghost. And in Galatians 5, what the Apostle Paul is addressing is similar congregations because like my dumb self, he multi-sided. He decided to give people opportunity that they could not handle. So he planted in Rome. He planted in Ephesus. He planted in Galatia. He planted in Corinth. He just went around and just started. So because everybody, everybody can't just go somewhere and start something. <laughs> Humbly speaking, you can't just appear in a city and begin something. Not everybody has that ability. But God did something on Paul's life because his assignment was not just grace. It was the ministry of the Holy Ghost pneumatology. Paul had a very unique assignment to teach and instruct about relationship with the Holy Ghost. So we get to Galatians 5 and he goes through all of this stuff about what happens when you walk in the flesh and my challenge is he's not talking to unbelievers. My challenge is he's writing to a church and he's talking to them about issues pressures, the law of Moses, legalism, and then he gets into very specific things in verse 19. He's talking about impure thoughts, your thought life. He's talking about eagerness for lustful pleasure, what you do with your horny. He's talking about idolatry, which is stubbornness, may. He's talking about spiritism and witchcraft because y'all love talking to dead people. And when I look at Galatians 5, say, I need some fruit. I don't understand why somebody feel with the Holy Ghost needs to talk to another ghost. Did you hear what I just told you? You don't need wisdom from your grandma. You don't need wisdom for your uncle. If they are in the grave, they are, should not be talking to you. Why are you taking wisdom from the dead? You need wisdom from that that is living and that that is alive. Lift your hands and say fruit. So when people, forgive me, start taking, when people start taking wisdom from the dead, I wonder how filled they are. Your dead relatives should not be teaching you how to live. You need the power, the wisdom, the guidance of the Holy Ghost. And I know Christians that listen more to the stars than they do the Holy Ghost. Um, so, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, witchcraft. That is, the, and, and, and let me just stay here because I feel a little pressure. Witchcraft is probably the heaviest in this nation that it's ever been. You don't want to hear it, but there is a high level of occultism, witchcraft, demon worship, and it's not in the streets, y'all. It's something that the Apostle Paul, because that's what we're studying, is his authorship. It's something, Dre, that Paul called another Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, it's something called another, it's, it's, it's not the real one. Jesus himself may say that many Christs, and America is under the influence of many Christs, but when you got people that got gifts and fruit, they cannot be deceived. When you got people that got gifts and fruit, they cannot be led astray. When you got people that got gifts and fruit, they don't go in the wrong direction. That's the issue. We're high in one and low in the other. Hatred, fighting, jealousy, anger, 
constant effort to get the best for yourself, complaints and criticisms, the feeling that everybody else is wrong. I have been teaching people for years. I won't say it. I have been teaching people for years that you have to be willing to be wrong. That's a part of character development. If you've got a commitment to your rightness, you've also assigned yourself to blindness. What being wrong does is gives you the opportunity to consider, to observe, to see. And when somebody is permanently investigated in their own whatever, according to Galatians 5, then they can't ever change. And Paul says right here, say, I need some fruit. Open your mouth, you're sad. Say, I need some fruit. Need some fruit. Paul said all of this comes with the Holy Ghost. Envy, murder. Now, you might not be a murderer with a gun or a murderer with a knife. I'm working in here. But you might be a murderer with your mouth. Uh, the beginning of this chapter teaches about how we bite and devour. What have you said behind their back? Yeah, you don't want to talk about it. I understand. What, 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 what have you, what word curses are you responsible for? Because as I've taught you before, the powers of life and death are where? They're in their tongue. But the Bible says it's hard to manage that mouth. And Christians got a mouth. It's so bad. They got a mouth. Even when they're typing, they got a mouth. And they can't fight. But they type. And and because <laughs> you're not gonna swing. Clap your hands right now. 6424 Langley. I will swing first. <laughs> Amen. But 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 Maurice, I'm sorry. But um Justin, just edit it. Don't be mad. Uh, the issue is, I know my gifts, but I'm working on my fruit. That's the issue. And it has to grow. Let's go through this really quickly. All right. Y'all ready? Verse 22. Let's study a little bit, and I'm going to let you go home. It's given ribs or smothered turkey today. Chicken? Okay. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce in us this kind of fruit, which means that it's not going to start big. When you look at your neighbor and say, it will not start big. Tell somebody else, it will not start big. Part of what that means is the Holy Spirit, according to what Paul is saying, will start dealing with you in an area he wants to grow you in. And if you don't want or like to grow, then dealings are going to be consistent. Talk back to me. So the seed is the dealing. He'll convict you about something that you're not used to be convicted about. He'll show you something that you ain't seen before. He'll say you, hey, what was that? Is that an emotion that's not submitted to me? Is that a mentality that I didn't give you? Is that deception? He'll start dealing with you. And if you ignore the dealing of the Holy Ghost, the wall of the soul gets thick. And the thicker the wall of the soul gets, the harder it is to lead you. The conscience gets stubborn. The mind, the, the, all of that gets hard and oppressed. But he says, when the Holy Ghost is in you, he will produce this kind of fruit, which means it has to start in the science of the seed. I'd like you to, in your own time, I do not have the time to go there today, to study the science of seed, how it works. First of all, it needs fertile ground. Second of all, it only will look like what it is. If I plant something that's an apple, it will not come out like an orange. Third of all, it will require seasons. A seed needs the season. <laughs> if it does not have the right season, it will not grow. 
Jesus cursed the fig tree for a reason. Study it on your own. I don't have time for that. But God will plant fruit in you, seeds in you. And, and, and Paul uses this allegory to show us what the Holy Spirit wants to do and how we approach life. Number one, and this is crazy, because he always prioritizes this. No matter when Paul talks, it's not just grace and faith. And he always is like, if you got the Holy Ghost, you're going to have love. And this is simple, Dave, but, you know, Christians don't really. Because they think, Bishop, that if you don't agree with me, you don't love me. And, and, and if you don't spend time with me, you don't love me. If, 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 if you're mad at me, you don't love me. But all of those can be the same. And what Paul said in Galatians 5 is, when the Holy Ghost controls your life, he will produce the fruit of love. So then we got something else to talk about. Who the heck was going to tell me love was fruit? Because I grew up all my life thinking it was an emotion. But Galatians 5 says it's a fruit. Which means it has to grow. If faith can grow, if hope can grow, if discipline can grow, if any of that can grow, then perhaps we got love wrong. It grows. It grows. You, you, you saw the disciples. You read it. You, you, you watched them tell Jesus, Lord, increase my faith. But nobody thought that about love. But love is also a matter of faith because we don't always love by proof. <laughs> yeah. We love not because people do right. We love because of faith. And we love because of conviction. Say, I receive. I receive. Open your mouth for real and say, I receive. I receive. So the first thing is love. The second thing that we see in this thing that, that, that is a fruit that's produced in us is joy. I, E.P., when I tell you this thing has worn me out, because I'm over here shaman la bala 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 and moping. Sad. Contending for joy. And Paul just told us that when you got the Holy Ghost, one of the byproducts of the Holy Ghost is joy. And the Bible said that unspeakable. It's the kind of joy you can't explain and that that is full of glory. So when your joy level is low, I want to know when the last time you've talked to the Holy Ghost. Y'all not talking back to me. In my life, when my joy level was down, my language and my conversation with the Spirit was also equal. I can tell where your relationship is with the Spirit of God by the power of your joy. And you need joy to focus. And you need joy to be disciplined. You need joy to dream. You need joy to stand up. You need joy to recover. You need joy joy to recoup and there is an assault on your joy I feel the hope there is an attack on your joy there are people in here that has not experienced real joy in a long time you smiling and cracking jokes and ain't got joy you laughing and ain't got joy but I believe God is saying I'm about to give unto you and restore unto you the joy of your salvation you're going to have joy joy I've come that you might have life more abundantly. I've come that you might have life through eternity. I did not come to condemn the world, nor shame them from their wall, but I've come that you might. I've come to give you life. I've come to give you joy. I've come to give you life. Woo! I've come to give you joy. I've come to give you life. I've come to give you joy. More, more abundantly. I got some more to go, but I feel good right now. Will you smack through people and say joy? Come on, just say Slap you people and say joy. In the name of Jesus, I command your joy to be restored. 
in the name of Jesus I command you to be full of joy I'm not talking to your body I'm talking to your soul let your joy be renewed let your joy be restored let your joy be strong be filled with joy live in joy Monday joy Tuesday joy Wednesday joy Thursday joy Friday joy Saturday joy joy on Sunday let your head just scream glory joy I feel the Holy Ghost on that joy joy so that I can obey joy so that nobody can control my emotions joy so that nobody can discourage me joy I want you to scream to the devil say you can't have my joy just to Tell the devil you can't have my joy. Say it! I know what I'm doing. Woo! Woo! Joy. Because the joy of the law, it is my strength. And the more joy I got, the stronger I am. Lift your hands and say joy. I'm sorry. The next, the next fruit, the next fruit, the next fruit. The next fruit is, 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 is a, a ancient concept. There is a Hebrew word for it. The Hebrew word for it is shalom. I, I feel like we're about to make a mess in here. And, 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 and the concept of peace, the, the American version of it interprets it as quietness. Uh-uh. What peace means in the Bible is everything is where it needs to be. I love your word. That don't mean I like it all the time because here's the issue. You think when you have peace, you like everything that's going on. But you can have peace, which means that I've been arranged. God, I love you. It means I've been situated. It means I have priority. I don't like it, but I've got peace with it. It hurt me, but I got peace with it. It made me mad, but I got peace with it. Lift your hands and say peace, peace, peace. Maurice, um, um, there, there was a storm. There were waters. I hate it. Now, I, I've developed a recent love for waters and boats, scenery. Yeah, I wasn't always that way. But one thing you're not going to do is make me swim. <laughs> Amen. Because <laughs> I know how to put a fire out. And uh, I know other, but waters, nah, you, you can't control them. But there was somebody who could. I wish I had help. The, 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 norm, normally, if you're drowning, you're drowning. If you're sinking, you're sinking. But I know somebody who made people stand on them. <laughs> Let's have a time. I know somebody who spoke to waters, which means that waters have ears. Watch me. And, 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 and Jesus, Jesus said he, he did two things. Let's talk. Vante, number one, he rebuked it. Y'all yeah. don't like that language anymore. I'm going to reteach you it. It's the power of the halt, the stop. I forbid you. You're not coming any closer to me. You're not going to do what you want to do in my world and my life. Depression, I rebuke you. Sadness, I rebuke you. Misery, I rebuke you. 
passivity, I rebuke you. Procrastination, I rebuke you. Retaliation, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, there is no water that can drown me. Anyway, the point I'm making is when it comes to the fruit of the Holy Ghost, Jesus used the same per terminology. Peace. Put it where it needs to be. He told the waters, peace, be still. Put it where it needs to be. Let me prophesy before I keep going. Will you just tell your neighbor everything is about to be where it needs to be? Now scream the word peace. Peace. To your mind, your heart, your soul, your life, your body. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over anxiety, nervousness, confusion. In the name of Jesus, insomnia. I pray for the peace of God. You should not be talking in tongues and tormented. I don't know where we got that from. We should not be and can't control our thoughts and control our mind. Lift your hands and say peace. When you receive the Holy Ghost according to Galatians 5 and fruit starts growing in you, you start getting peace. Now here's another one that I'm... Um, Ciao. Um, patience. I really wish, Sharice, that the Holy Ghost was just about tongues. Because when I'm looking at this, I fall short. And now I know why Paul said, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled. Not get filled, <laughs> but be filled. So I'm always trying to live the full life. And understanding what it is to be full of the Holy Ghost because when I lose my patience and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it, it reminds me of where I am with the Holy Ghost. I want to know, y'all quiet on me, how many of you are impatient? You got a promise that you're mad at, impatient. You got a prophecy that you're mad at, impatient. You got a process that you don't like, impatient. Just impatient. But the Bible says in Galatians 5 that this is one of the fruit of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to learn how to wait. you got to learn how to wait. And if you're waiting, you got to learn how to watch. you got to learn how to wait. Woo! you got to learn how to watch. And the medicine for waiting and watching is worship. Because you're going to need a reminder. You're going to need a reason. You're going to have to need a focus point. Say, I'll wait on it. Now, here's something else that I also, I, I think I fall, I, I'm going I'm to put myself out there because I know y'all going to lie to me. Kindness. I'm not the nicest person. And, and when you think about the biblical definition of kindness, what it really means is the restraint of the mouth. Y'all have been spared for the last two years from everything I want to say. I, if I will just boast in the Lord, have not said everything I think. And the way kindness manifests is a bridle on the tongue, a control of the thought. It does not mean you got to walk around giving gifts because it's not generosity, it's kindness. And what kindness is, is consideration. If I do this to you, I will destroy you. Now, 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 now you, you can say whatever you want to say, post whatever you want to. Now, if I respond and react, your life is over. You have no career. The whole premise, never mind. So, so what, amen. So what kindness is, is thought restraint, word restraint, reaction restraint. You got to learn how to hold it back. 
You got to learn how to not do what, what you think you could do and what you're able to do. You got to learn how to hold it back. It does not mean you have to tolerate abuse, Noel. What it means is you get the opportunity in your character to restrain. <laughs> and if you don't learn restraint, then what's going to happen is uh, the aspect of your lack and your fruit is going to impact your gift. So now you're going to be prophesying all over the place, off. You're going to be walking around giving false discernment, off. You're going to be walking around trying to heal people and then not getting out of wheelchairs because you didn't learn restraint in one area and, and you need it in both. Because one thing the fruit and the gifts need is restraint. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You can control that. The Holy Spirit makes you do nothing out of your body. Be in a trance all you want to. If I tap you and wake you up, you can get up. If I'm preaching, you should not be talking in tongues over me. I'm trying to teach you and you like, No! Discipline yourself. Restrain yourself. Hold that thing in. Wait till you get in the car. I'm working it here. I'm talking about fruit. Goodness. Goodness. Goodness has to do with, if you will hear, goodness has everything to do with what you do for people who can't repay you. And if you live your life for payback, you're going to be disappointed every time. I want you to hear what I'm telling you. I've lived it. I'm living it. If you live your life for payback, you're going to be disappointed every time. If you decide to give something, this is a mature word. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Don't expect nothing. I did it because I wanted to. I cooked because I wanted to. I paid your bill because I wanted to. I gave you the car because I wanted to. You, you don't even have it in you to do it. But here's what Jesus said even about forgiveness. If you can only love and you can only relate to those that can do it back, that's our problem. When you're in the fruit season, God is like, I want to see what you can do for those who can't do it back. You'll get it later because that's how I know the fruit is there. I need to see some fruit because people can't eat your tongues. I, they try with me, but they can eat your fruit. Faithfulness. The Holy Ghost produces consistency in your life. The Holy Ghost wakes you up to pray. The Holy Ghost convicts you about study. The Holy Ghost teaches you about counsel. The Holy Ghost produce, and how, lift your hands if you know an inconsistent Christian. Let me see something real fast. Put your hands down. Now, how many of you are an inconsistent Christian? Understood. So what I'm trying to teach you is when you are full of the Holy Ghost, say, I need some fruit. You got to be more consistent. You don't determine your commitment based upon what's popular. And you don't determine your discipline based upon uh, 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 crowds and audiences and all of that. You just need to live your life in consistency. Now, when you live your life consistently, what happens is character is grown in you. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, I receive. I receive. Gentleness. Ciao. I feel so bad preaching this to y'all because contrary to popular opinion and contrary to most preachers, I'm going to tell you, I ain't here yet. I'm teaching and learning. Gentleness. Um, that means empathy. I get aggravated, for example, when women say I, I, um, I have menstrual cramps and I can't come to church. And I'll be like, bruh,
if you don't get an aspirin, a Tylenol, a ginger ale, or some saltines or something, and get your end in church. But, but I'm going to tell you why. You sit down on the toilet. I stand up. So part of what that means is that I don't understand what you're going through. I ain't never been in a situation where I've had a human being in me. So there's a lack of empathy with, with your mutation. I, I, can't, I can't fathom. What I'm trying to say is that I would, if anything were kicking in me, I'd be punching it back. I don't know how y'all walk around living like that. I'm a man. So Eric, I, there is a lack of empathy. So when Paul, when Paul is talking about gentleness, what he's saying is the Holy Spirit will make you consider the situation. The Holy Spirit will make you look at a story, a life, a circumstance and be like, I wonder how I would react in this. What would I do if this? And you know, y'all love to tell preachers what to do. Y'all love to be consultants in God, especially you. Y'all just love, y'all love it. I mean, it's just like y'all got a national firm, like it's an a agency. Deconstruction Society Incorporated. And then none of y'all started a, 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 a thing. Not one. You got two kids. I got 4,000. Is everybody okay? So in gentleness, what it does is it gives sociological, anthropological consideration to a person's impact in a circumstance. I don't know what it is to do this. Thank God my mother is alive. So if your mother passes, I'm going to have to choose gentleness to understand where you might be because I've not been there. You understand what I'm saying? I've never lost a child to the glory of God. I'll shout right now, but I can't. Ain't no bullet touched mine. So when one touches yours, I have to make the effort through the power of the Holy Ghost to wonder how you, what that could feel like. Does this make sense to you? I've never been divorced. I've never been through a, a fire in my house burning down or something like that. So there's circumstances that will happen in lives that you have to have gentleness to understand. You don't know what it is to be them. And in the same way, they don't know what it is to be you. And you got to have gentleness. But I'm convinced that without the Holy Ghost, y'all can prove me wrong and debate me later, I'm convinced that human nature is so cruel that without the Holy Ghost, they can't be gentle. I'm convinced that without the Holy Ghost, I am settled on it. People cannot consider it takes the Holy Ghost. Will you lift your hands and say, it takes the Holy Ghost. I'm almost done with you. Um, faithfulness. Gentleness. And... Here's a final one. Um, though Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels... I got the gift of both. I speak in the tongues of men <laughs> in more ways than one. Yep. Elder Norwood, when I tell you I will read somebody from, God is so good. He's a wonderful God. I got a gift of literary torture. Amen. The torrent that's in my tonsils. I'll get you. And then I also speak with heavenly tongues. But when we're looking at the issue of self-control, it's the power, watch me, of option management. I could say it this way, talk back to me. Or I could say it this way. I could respond this way, or I could retaliate that way. These are things that we don't think about. When we were tearing May Dupree at that altar, we was just like, just let me foam at the mouth and, and say some stuff in the other language. Nobody thought about the character that would come into your life as a byproduct of being filled. And Paul is like, no, 
You're not filled for fun. You're filled for fruit. And your fruit will determine how you function. So certainly, prophesy, do all of that. You know, I love that. I'm a conveyor, a transmitter. I, I, all of that is true. The word of knowledge is my thing. The gift of discerning of spirits. Um, the word of wisdom. The working of miracles. The gift of faith. Pray for me, child. Cause I'm, that ain't, I ain't there yet. Um, uh, the gifts of healing. All of that stuff is important. But they are stabilized. <laughs> You're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> but the fruit stabilizes the gifts. It's almost like life insurance. So there's a lot of people that are born with gifts. You were born with gifts. You were not born with fruit. Do you understand what I'm saying? You came to the world with spiritual and supernatural capability and ability. Divine things. Stuff that you can't even control. My jokes, Dre, are prophetic. I, I say things casually and be exposed in stuff that I don't know nothing about. I'd be like, that's why your mom ain't your mama. <laughs> and folk be like, I got a bad case of the I can't help it. I was born that way. So you are born with abilities. If you move in healing, you were born with it. If, if, if you call, and deliverance is a healing ministry. So even if you have a propensity towards casting out devils and functioning in that way, you were born with it. The only thing you did not be, uh, come to the world with is fruit. You've got to be fruitful, not just gifted. Gifted and fruitful. And it comes by your relationship with the Holy Ghost. Now, there are a lot of people who study the word, but they do it without the partnership of the Holy Spirit. And people often ask me about how I understand mysteries and how I interpret things. It's because I don't read the Bible by myself. I never open the scriptures without saying, Holy Spirit, teach me. You wrote this. He's my tutor, my mentor. I do that. So when we're thinking about fruitfulness and having fruit, it's not just about being nice. It's about developing these life skills, these life abilities that will give you endurance. Because here's the bottom line. At the end of our text, what Paul says is the people that do this have crucified themselves. And they don't live out their carnal desires. They have put their desires on the cross. So what I'm challenging you to do today as we study uh, uh, Corinth, what I'm challenging you to do is look at Paul as an emissary and as an example. Oh, hi, aunt. As an emissary and as an example of somebody that was committed to fruit. What he basically showed us was I'm going to grow. I am an apostle, but I will grow. I am a disciple, but I will grow. I'm mad at Peter, James, John, all of them get on my nerves, but I will grow. One thing I'm not going to do is stay in the same place. You, you can say what you want and criticize my apostolicity. You can say that I didn't see the Christ for real, but I'm going to grow. And, and, and here's the issue. I'm going to grow on your face. And I'm going to grow as a matter of warfare. I'm going to see my growth as a weapon. I wish you would open your belly and hear me. Well, you, you're not going to keep me stuck in the same place emotionally and in the same place spiritually, in the same place where I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow in the way I handle stuff. I'm going to grow in the way I see things. I'm going to grow in the way I respond. I'm going to grow. And many people think they got the Holy Ghost and they don't grow. I know a lot of people who are talking in tongues and stagnant. Bruh, you've been talking in tongues for years. What is going on in your head, your heart, your manner of life? Grow, Sheba, in the devil's face. Grow, in, irrespective of the circumstance. Grow, whether you got the job you want or not. Grow, 
whether people offend you or not. Grow. Don't use it as an excuse to be your old self. Go ahead and grow. You don't need no permission to grow. The Bible says against such there is no law. Just grow. I hereby ordain you. I'm going to stop today. Now stand up. Now I was just trolling her at first and then I heard something. You will be like Junia. And you will have a discipleship anointing. Something is coming upon your shoulders where you will form and you will craft and you will create in the hearts of men and women. And it will be even by the spirit of revelation, a discipler. You will make disciples. You, yeah, that's the main thing. You will make disciples. You will make disciples. You will make disciples. And you must receive this in order for you to be promoted. Things will change in your life. Yeah, Junia, the female that was among the apostles. You have to make disciples. Let there be... Yeah. You're, you're, you're even, I see that you're even going to teach Paul. You're going to teach Galatians, and you're going to teach Romans, and you're going to teach it, and you're going to do so on various ways and formats but you've been hiding in plain sight yeah. Yeah. and the Holy Ghost says to tell you it's time to make some disciples yeah. God said to tell you God God said to tell you I need about a thousand of yous get busy that's the word of the Lord okay <laughs> And you will also have questions from your family. Something is about to happen where there is a storm coming and they're going to come to you for answers. What does this mean? And you will have the word so deeply hidden within you that you're going to bring peace. It's fruit season for you. It's a babron by mine. This is fruit season. It's fruit season. <laughs> Funnily enough, what I'm hearing the Holy Ghost saying is he just got you to accept the gifts. But now it's time for fruit. He's growing you. He's growing you. And keep growing, baby. Grow. I feel the anointing coming on me so strong. Please stand. Grab a sin Grab whoever is closest to you. Y'all know how we do. Let's pray for growth. Let's grow. In the face of the wicked one, let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. Not just let's go, but let's grow. Grab them now and begin to pray with everything within you. In the name of Jesus, I command the husband in you to grow. I command the man in you to grow, the son in you to grow, the preacher in you to grow, the, the gift of God in you to grow, the businessman 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 to grow. You're not an orphan. Stop now. In Come on, I need y'all to... I'm moving in something. You're not an orphan. I don't care what your father did. You're not an orphan. In the name of Jesus, I command growth. Come on. You have the authority by the power of the Holy Ghost to speak to that that is in your brother and in your sister. Grow in every gift. Yeah. Grow in every ability. Grow in your creativity. Grow in your leadership. Grow in the name of Jesus. We command a fruit season. Grow in your study come on pray for him grow in your study ha! grow in your 
study, grow in your study, yeah, grow in your study, shoo, grow in your prayer life, grow, grow, grow in the name of Jesus, the devil wants you to stay wherever you are, but you must grow, no more lacking, no more stagnation, no more weariness, come on, come on, pray, grow in the name of Jesus, as I hold my brother's hand, as I hold my brother's hand, I command growth to every area of their life, let the fountain of their deep be opened up, intercession now, the power of prayer, in the name of Jesus, grow, grow in your study, in your desire, may your worship life open up, Woo! may your worship life open up, your intimacy open up now, in the name of Jesus, grow with or without him, hey, grow, 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 come on, keep praying for your neighbor, I prophesy growth to you, in the, na in the name of Jesus, that by the end of this year, by the turn of this year, you will not be the same man, you will not be the same woman, you're getting ready to break out on the left and the right, and you're getting ready to prosper in a way you've never dreamed, in a way you've never imagined, grow, 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 finish the book, start the program, move forward in the things the Holy Ghost has called you to do, and grow, grow, come on, pray harder now, pray like it was you, grow, grow.
This is your season to grow. It doesn't mean that things will be ideal. It doesn't even mean that things will be comfortable. It means you've got to grow. You're not going through it. You're growing through it. You're growing through it. You're growing through it. Lift your hands and open up your heart. That's the power. That's the power of God. He's healing you from grief. Grow now so that your future can be secure. Grow so that you can obey your assignment. Grow. You're in rebellion. Grow. You too. Lift your hands, honey. God's been waiting for a surrendered heart. And you've been so mad at church people that it's kept you in a stuck place. But grow. There is indeed a dreamer of dreams in you. Lift your hands. It's coming heavy. You dream things. You see things before they occur. Grow. The devil has an agenda for your heart. Ho! He has an agenda for your heart. Ho! He has an agenda for your heart. But you've got to grow. I saw somebody. It was you. Come here. of God is about to come on you in a strong way to deliver you. He desires to deliver you from the things that are trying to claim you. There are several things that have claimed your life. Uh, they've claimed you. Other gods are in competition over who you're going to believe. Hope. Other gods are in competition about what you're going to believe. One of them is trying to convince you to not believe the Bible. One of them is trying to pull you into Scientology. They're trying to recruit you because they know your gift. But the poet in you, the writer in you, in you, is being revived by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by accident that you're here today. You've got to grow through these questions. Grow through them. And I'll handle your mother. Grow through them. And I'll deal with your career. Grow. Grow. There's so much creativity in your hands born to work and to create God's going to do something in and with you you just got to submit everybody lift your hands and say grow uh, oh. everybody lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost will you
not overseen. You're not overlooked. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing.
fruit of God, the fruit of the Spirit is working in your personality, your ways, your conversations. your hand on her chest whatever is claimed your body cannot cancer I'm talking to you you know my voice I curse you now oh! in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus there's no more cough coffin shopping there's no more funeral planning there's no more talking about who gets what when you die, you got more work to do. Anna, Anna, Anna. I wish somebody would lift their hands and shout to God in here. Lift your hands and shout to God, will you? your hands I'm letting you go father I thank you now <sighs> thank you now thank you now thank you for fire thank you for fire thank you for fire you've designed to accomplish in this place I pray that your will is done now in the hearts of every man and every woman here Tyrone is that your name come your hands now the fire of God is going to hit you strong evangelist lift your hands strongly <laughs> on you now <laughs> I own you now <laughs> the preaching of the gospel the mystery of Christ healing 
the deliverance not you now I want somebody to scream and give God the glory right now who are you the anointing is on you Feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I said shout. I said shout. Let's grow.